Sport Press. Yo. Yeah. No layup line, no warm ups, no nothing. We just walk right into the stadium and get into the game. Let's do it. When the beat holds in the song, when the white jerseys on the road, cause how we feel where we roam is our home. Leaving these other podcasts null and void. The show can't miss something like Tom Shepard and Corduroy's. Full sport press, you know them boys. Jay run the point, lock for three, and me, I crash the boys. Weezy told you that it's paid for. Greetings and salutations. I would like to welcome everybody back and some of you for the first time to the Full Sport Press Podcast, the premier sports podcast for the consummate sports fan. And this is your one-stop shop for all sports related news and topics. I'm Jay Hope. It's your boy, Big Jeff. Weezy in the building. Say, what's up, Weezy? What it do? What it do? He's screaming. God damn. He's screaming in my ear. What it do? Cameraman, how you doing over there, brother? <laughs> Two thumbs oh, up fast. with a rhythm. Hey, <laughs> jazz, jazz, hey! Oh my god, jazz! <laughs> hey, man. Oh my god, hey, you a wild man? <laughs> you a wild for that, man? Weezy, how was your week going so far, brother? It's going pretty good. It's for sure. Can't for complain sure. about it. Yeah, you ain't under the weather this week. Nah, nah, I'm good. This you bounced week. back. Yeah, it was a rough couple weeks. Shout a couple you. of weeks too. That one had you down. Yeah, shout out to your, yeah, out to your allergies. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> been tried to tell him, Jeff. What about you, bro? Man, no complaints, bro. No, so, none at all. Yeah, I'm all right, man. I'm good. Yeah, allergies that. still here. Yeah, okay, they yeah. still here. They ain't going nowhere. Nah, 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 nah for sure. Because you know why? One day is seventy. Yep. Then one day is fifty three. Easy. Then it's thirty at night. Yeah. Then we back to fifty. Then we back to seventy. Yeah. yeah well, right. man, it's gonna be it's gonna be thirty about. Two months in a row. Yeah, I'm cool with that. My allergies will be like, okay. Yeah, just, yeah, just, hey, make, just make up your mind. Just That's make up it. your mind. For oh, sure. Man. Episode 397, guys. We're ranking the top seven documentaries of 2021. FSP style. Always FSP style. You better damn know it. Better damn believe it. Let's kick it off, Weezy. Best of the week. What you got, buddy? Uh, this week, best of the week, man. LeBron James stepped up for his coach this week. They, they say he was on the hot seat. Mm-hmm. He came out and said, Frank Vogel, everything is good. You know, and came out and won the game and scored 30 points in that game. Yeah, he did. Shout out to LeBron James. Shout out to LeBron James. LeBron James. LeBron James. What you got, Jeff? Best of the week. Oh, man. You know, we was we vaxxed up, boosted up, mm-hmm. masked up. Me and yeah. Granddad hit the road. Yeah. Took him to the casino, man. Granddad got the ball out a little bit. That's what's up, man. Yeah, did you was, have a good time? Yeah, he had a great time. Did you did you do penny slots? Man, it was, they only have penny slots no more. They don't? You can't even, you can't, you, you got to put at least $5 in the slot machine. To uh, play. Wow. Yeah. You can't even put yeah. a dollar in. You got to put $5 in. So yeah, he's, needless to say, time. I was watching most of the day. Damn. Yeah. Drought season. Pandemic messed up everything. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody Wait, taxed. There ain't no more penny slots. Oak Grove, the one in Oak Grove, yeah. you cannot put a dollar in them. Like we had to go back and re change our currency because we got we had dollars. Yeah. And we were trying to slide the machine. We like, man, these machines don't work. Like, yeah. like, you, Oak Grove, man, man. you hit that one time in Vegas, I'm a penny machine. You were. <laughs> yeah, like it, man, that's gone, man. Hey, man. Yeah, that ain't, hey. That's all we do. <laughs> and then you damn lie, my mama be tearing the penny machine so up. They dog. still had like you, you could wait that one for, like, time, man. Twenty five cents. I got the ass that. Uh, yeah. I got the ass in that penny machine. It was going crazy. You should, you should see that, Jeff. He said, "Oh, I want this much." Yeah. Hey, now nah, it, it was going crazy. It was, it was the lawns was going off. I said, "Man, we in the money. It was about forty dollars." <laughs> my best of the week is Billy Napier, my head coach, man, in University of Florida Uh-oh. Gators. Um, we expect it. It's basically out now that uh, we're hiring LSU former defensive back coach Corey Raymond as the associate head coach, defense cornerbacks coach. You don't know anything about uh, Corey Raymond. <laughs> He's the uh, LSU defensive recruiter. Mm-hmm. And you probably know some of the names Jamal Adams, mm-hmm. Gritty Williams. Eli Ricks, Jamal Adams, <laughs> Tredavious White. Tredavious. Oh, Jamal Adams, you remember him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Derek Stingley, who'll be a top five pick this year. Yeah. Uh, Project's my ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's time. It's time. Hey, I feel good. Win. Now, you got to play the game. You got to play the game. You got to play the games. Yeah. But look. Yeah. We it's got a recruiter. Got a recruiter. Got a recruiter. Hey. hey. That, that means something. Hey. He put, means he put good coaches around him. Man. Yeah, that's, that's all it takes. That's it. That's what we first Now, when Eddie George did that, you, you shamed him. Uh-oh. No, no, no. No, no. Well, at Georgia Day, you said he why, couldn't coach. I, why? Put your finger down, though, for real. I'm just saying. Talk to me like a man. I, that's what I'm doing. No, nah, not pointing. Children point. All uh, right. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Worst of the week, Jeff. What you got, man? Oh, uh, man. The Realville group chat, man, uh, mm-hmm. was body shaming early in the NBA season. <laughs> uh, they were. Jeff, now this is bullshit. This is <laughs> let, 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 let him get his point can off. I get, can, I, can I say what I'm saying? Because it's cap, though. It's not cap. 
Real Viv group chat took a week <laughs> to <laughs> body shame Young body Zion shame. Williamson. Um, Photoshop pictures were, were spread. Said my boy was 400, close to 400. He 330, Jim. Yeah, he, that ain't 400. But he said my, said, said my dog was out here, Husky. Shout out to Husky Nation. I'm a car carrying member of Husky Nation, cameraman. And um, apparently there's a new member in Husky Nation. Uh, goes by the name of Luca Donkic. Uh, his program weight is 220 pounds. Luca came to camp roughly between 260 and 270. But no one, I not mean no I one in the real view group chat had anything to say about it. Do you know how many people play in the shape starting the season? Oh, oh but here's the thing, though. The season has started, and he's still 260. He's no, 250, he's not, 260. man. You look at Luka, he's not no, 260. Reggie Miller said he's plotting up the floor. <laughs> <laughs> he looks out of shape. All right, so we're going to do that. Oh, right, here we go. How in the hell <laughs> is Zion Williamson 330 pounds today? I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I, just want, I just want equal yeah, body yeah, shape. That's, yeah, all, I want. that's all you want. That's all I want equal body shape. I wish. I wish. <laughs> Weez, what you got worst of the week? Worst of the week, man. Jared Jones, man, running his mouth about these boys, these wide receivers not running good routes. Oh, yeah. That's tough. Jerry, you just, come on, man. Yeah. Just, just, you know what I'm telling you, these wide receivers, they divas, they going to they gonna quit on you. Mm-hmm. And then... You should just save it for the save it for the, I don't know, man. Just shut up. Yeah, he got shut up though. But you know when you get a little older, yeah, you just say what you you say what the, yeah, yeah, come to the top of your yeah. brain. He's a cowboy. Definitely. Yeah, he's a cowboy in real life to himself. I ain't no question. Yeah, you know, Most definitely. Yeah. 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 My worst week is Kyrie Irving. <laughs> Said he might be swayed into taking a plant based COVID vaccine that's in the works, the impossible vaccine. I call it the Beyond vaccine. Beyond vaccine. <laughs> you know for sure. Um, Kyrie, your client. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Come on, bro. Yeah. Just. Um, so you're gonna take something that I know they're not testing that on hella people. Yeah. The COVID vaccine with the Beyond vaccine. No, no, they just Come on, man. They just putting that out there for Kyrie. <laughs> and uh, I was about to. You about to go there? Hey, you about, about to do it? I saw it. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Got, I'm proud of you. That's yeah, growth yeah. right there. Kyrie, yeah. Animal yeah. Brown. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Still, he's just <laughs> wet there anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Animal Brown for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you check us out on iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, Beyond Pod, YouTube, and of course, the SoundCloud page to catch up on the full archive of past episodes of FSP. Just search Full Sport Press Podcast. Jeff. Yes, sir. You have 10 good rest in seconds. Oh, yeah. Let's start the clock. The WWE officially announced the next in line program, NIL. So, what that means is, guys, they're going to be doing, they know NCAA athletes. Be able to get paid off their name, in, image, and likeness, right? For sure. Mm-hmm. They have a program now called, like I said, Next in Line. What that's going to do is help guys in college with building their brands, media training, communications, live event promotions, and creative writing, and community relations. Basically, they're grooming athletes who may not be professional level tier athletes, but are playing in college. To get them in the developmental program, and you'll win a contract with WWE. So. Shout out to them, man. Shout out to them, man. Yeah. Most definitely. How you can get talent? You got to get the talent. Hey, yeah. find the talent. Got to. Because the talent. Get... is out there. It's out there. Yes, sir. Damn right. <laughs> and make sure you tune in each and every Thursday to the 808s and Chess Shots podcast. Myself, shout out to my co-host, Neek. Like we always say, you might not like it, but your auntie love wrestling. Show now to this with questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment. Give us a thumbs up on the YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please rate and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. You tell a friend. That the revolution will be podcasted. And before we get started, the first half, Weezy, do you have a yellow box of Cheerios award recipient for the listeners? I do. This week's award recipient is none other than the No Limit Soldier, Master P, and his homeboy, Animal Brown. And his homeboy, Realville Constituent. Oh, boy. Animal, Animal Brown, Brown. Okay. most definitely. Um, Hersey Miller, rap mogul masterpiece son, mm-hmm. has ended his basketball career at Tennessee State University, land of the golden sunshine. Right. Shout out to the guys. Yes, sir. Entered the NCAA transfer portal. Hersey played in six games and averaged 10 minutes per game. Hersey is a six foot three guard. He announced that he suffered a season ending lower body injury. He tried to play through despite the pain. Despite him dunking, running really fast throughout the rest of those games, and he was vowing to be back next year for the show. Immediately after that, Master P got on TMZ and reported that historically black colleges and universities need increased funding to provide the same level of medical services as the major collegiate basketball programs. He added also that the injury could have been avoided 
during his son's time at said Tennessee State University there were better resources at HBCUs. Mm. Now let's rewind. Mm. When Master P released mm. a statement in July of 2021, Uh-oh. he said, this is so big for the culture. And I quote, with my son going to an HBCU and going to Tennessee State University, this is going to change the narrative. This is about economic empowerment and teaching the Power Five athletes that HBCUs are in the spotlight for the right reasons. <laughs> I think this is a movement. I think so many kids behind it will be able to come and do the exact same thing that Hersey is doing. End quote. Everything you just said in that quote in July, you completely ruined it with that interview at TMZ. Sure did. 100%. I, I think... Um, mm. You know, if you're gonna take your kid out out of school just because you know you're not getting, uh, you know, if he's hurt or not getting playing time, or whatever, whatever, just take him out of school and, and go and go your separate ways. But you don't drag the school down, which you don't do that, especially when it's not true. Yeah, <laughs> that's the difference. Like it'd be different if it was a situation where you know it was you know, TSU had some of the greatest. Like they have Titans doctors, guys. They have yeah, Titans. Not, yeah, 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 that's just not. Let's just be honest. Yeah, I mean, some of the you know some D two schools in certain situations so have some you know yeah. some bad facilities and maybe. doctors and things. Maybe, but Tennessee State is a state university. They're not letting their kids play without proper acknowledgement of injuries and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, he, yeah. I lost all respect for Master P. One hundred percent. He didn't come to TSU to uplift anybody. He saw an opportunity to run a narrative, like he said, mm-hmm. and when it didn't work, he left like a coward. In my eyes, he didn't even drop off reps next. Speaking of that shit, he, oh. or noodles, he didn't even bring us noodles. This, yeah, talking about resources. You know what I'm saying? Better resources. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> you want us to eat this shit? Yeah, he didn't even bring that. Yeah, he didn't bring that to the school. I, I, I you know why? Because it's trash. <laughs> It's so, trash. This, this ain't ramen. This shit, that shit trash. That shit trash. This shit trash, man. Yeah, that shit trash. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that shit trash. That shit ain't ramen. You got reps next Yeah, you got reps next too. He got my boy E40 on this. I had to do this to E40, yeah. but this shit. That yeah. shit trash. <laughs> that shit trash, man. Shouldn't do no shit like that. Yeah. So, Spike, Spike Luke said something on dick, and God rest her soul. My grandmother say this all the time. If you got problems in house, you keep them problems in house. In house. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the you know, and I and I understand you know, of course, with ties to the show and things like that, we don't have to speak on that. You no, know? so of course, you and I, Jay, you know, attended Tennessee State, all this, all those things. So we got we we feel a certain kind of way about Tennessee State. We invested for sure, but that TMZ interview was bothersome on so many levels because Master P can say stuff and control a narrative that just isn't true. Yep, that's the thing. So he can get out and and say these type of things, and now. <laughs> The, the narrative that he created in July about wanting other college kids to come to HBCUs. Now you're saying the medical staff isn't up to par come and on. this, that, and the third. Now this narrative that you want to create about going to HBCUs. Come on, man. Now you tainted it. You tainted it. A hundred percent. Shit. And you know. <laughs> and then. Okay. Then, you know, it's a guy. On the network that has a podcast, and you get on your said podcast, Animal Brown, a black man, a black man. Yeah, he's a black man. They spent some time up at TSU. Yeah, he did. Oh, okay, yeah. Broke bread with TSU. Yeah, Spence, yeah, yeah, nah, for hoodies. sure. Yeah, broke bread with the team. And I just want to know how many things Master P's done for him in his life. Now, for real, I just want to know if it was know. anything. The thing that got more A-B is. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. The thing that got more A-B is. Spike Lou, I mean, Spike Lou asked a question or whatever. And he said, the only people that's upset about it is the ones that's like from Nashville and people that's close to her. And you from B-Not? Man. Yeah, I know I know Atlanta good to you. I know you. on the same 372 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, I know Atlanta good to you, but you from B-Not. Man, just act like you from Nashville. Come on. At the end of the day. If we from Nashville, we from Nashville. You from B-Not. You know what I'm saying? By the street, by the stove. And I understand being an apologist. I'm an apologist for a lot of people, Jay-Z, Nas, the Kobe Bryant, whatever the case may be, but if they did something foul to somebody that I can make a phone call to, ain't no way in the world. I'm riding with the person I'm going to be on the phone with, 100%. You said courtside. 
come on, man. I'm riding with the person I have a real relationship with, not a make believe relationship. And you know, good Shut cop up. ass Jeff. You know, you know what no, I mean. But that's no, com- no, 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 and no, no, and that's coming from me, a person close to the situation. <laughs> no, that's the thing. So that's the thing. That statement that of well, AB made the statement of the only people that are upset or. I think the word was emotional. He used about it. Emotional. Yeah. That, oh, he said emotional. I'm not sure. I, oh, I think emo- it was now we're emotional. On. I'm just. I'm not saying. I'm just trying to figure out what he said. But either way, I understand what he's saying. But the reason why that's true is because you you're there and you get to see what really how it unfolded. Yeah. Now nah, for sure. You saw. Shout out to shout out to shout out to DP. I know you're listening. Yeah. He said it was a show from day one. No, nah, for sure. He said it day one. He, he said it day one. And in in and the thing about. You know, the, the knock on Master P, we joke all the time, you know, before this got serious, like he always, he has great intentions or no, it seems don't. like he does have great intentions from the start, but he doesn't follow through on a lot of things, yeah. you know. So then coming and making this big hoopla, showing up to the land of the golden sunshine with misspelled hoodies. Don't forget, never forget that. Never, never nah, forget man. he had misspelled hoodies. Never forget Had that. a basketball camp with misspelled t-shirts. Never forget that. Never forget yeah. that. Fake ass ramen noodles. Okay. Yeah. Just never forget that. The, nah, the, 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 the cap's out the bag day one. Yeah, no, nah, I mean, the thing is, it's all in, you know, I get it. You know, it's everybody had a people that they ride with or whatever. Yeah, of course. But ride who really ride with you, you know, that's all that matters. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. That you got gonna, me hot. You gonna drop them off? You damn right. You damn right. You ain't gotta worry about this yeah. one. I got this one, player. You got both of them. I got both of them. You damn right. <laughs> no, no. We're going to drive. We're going to drive. We're going to drive. We're going to drive. Gonna drive. And, and shout out to Hersey Miller. Shout out to... That's the that's the person yeah. that suffers in this shout shit. Shout out to Hersey Miller. It's a great kid, yeah. bro. A great kid, yeah. man. And hey, real quick, and then we out of here. Ken Griffey Jr. has a son that plays football at Florida A&M University. Yeah. Ken Griffey Jr. is a Hall of Famer. Yes. First ballot. Yes. No question. Not Unanimous, yeah. right? Yeah. His son is red shirting at Florida A&M University. Have you heard anything about that? Why, what's wrong with? Like, Ain't nothing wrong with yeah. that. You know why? Because he's a real father. Be a real father to your kids. It is, <laughs> it's, but it's nothing wrong with. I and, mean. and I know we live in. I know we live in. A, and we, we, I know we going along in this too. But I know we live in a world where the transfer transfer portal is real. Where, well, not even that. The high school uh, transfers is real. I mean, if you're not getting playing time, you go to a different school. I get that. I totally understand if Hersey didn't feel like he was going to get a lot of clock this year and he was really hurt and he wanted to leave. I get that. That TMZ article, though, that's what did That's it. the only thing I that's have a problem with. That's what did with. it. Because you, 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 Master P has a wide enough net where he can control the narrative and you're making it seem like Tennessee State was beneath you and was not up to your standards and could not take care of your son when hell if it's that bad go to go to Vanderbilt Vanderbilt right up the street yeah took care of him. yeah what he I, no mind I was about to right up the street that's what I'm saying yeah and you'd have really been on the bench at Vanderbilt no, I'm talking about just the hospital <laughs> if he was hurt that bad go to yeah. Vanderbilt hospital nah, sports yeah. medicine is clinic right up the street nah, they, they sure. got me right in high school yeah. I was straight yeah now nah, they got everybody and then again TSU has some of the best doctors that that do surgeries for their athletes yeah. It's, man, nah. As far as prevention, that's bullshit for sure. Shout out to AB for sure. Realville family. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, AB. most definitely. Yeah. You guys ready to get started the first half? Let's do it. Let's get it. It's your man Spike Lou from the On Deck TV podcast. Join us every Wednesday, man, as we go over hip hop from a Southern perspective. Me and my guy, Animal Brown, be giving it to you for over 400 episodes. Tune in for the latest and support the real. We out. First half, the hottest sports news of the past week, like we do each and every week here at the Full Sport Press Podcast. Before we get started, I am Jay Ho. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your boy, Weezy. What they do? What they do? Weezy, where can they find you on social media, my brother? FSP underscore Weezy on IG, and I'm at Ho Weezy on Twitter. Most definitely. Holla at you. Jeff. Jeez. I'm Jay Easley, 84, across all social media platforms. Most definitely. I'm Jay Ho on Instagram and Twitter. Let's talk about it on Twitter, for sure. <laughs> Let's have a conversation. Yeah. Boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you sure know how to, hey, hey, what? Jeff is a politician. You what are you me? talking about? He gonna keep, he gonna keep, he gonna keep. Look, he gonna keep all votes neutral. That's just not true. I uh, know nah, for sure. You gotta pick. A, you gotta choose. Like we said, you gotta choose a side. You didn't. I mean, nah, yeah, yeah, nah. Yeah. It's it's a it's a side to be chose, uh-huh. and then it's like I mean, yeah, or oh, it's gray area. You're the gray. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. I might have to drop franchise and call it Earl Gray. Oh my God, You're Earl Gray. Um, <laughs> FSP Fantasy Football. Listen, man, <laughs> we can go over the matchups all we want. Here's the thing. Talk about it. Week 14 is all on the line. Three team race for the final playoff spot. Shout out to DP. I know he's listening. He currently holds the sixth spot. If he wins, he's in. 
<laughs> if he wins, he's in. But here's the thing. Mm. Shout out to myself. Shout out to Coach Wayman. Both of us pulled without wins out of our asses last week mm -hmm. and remained in playoff contention. Coach Wayman, if he wins, and myself, if I lose and DP loses, Coach Wayman is in. Here we go. If I win, I just need DP to lose. Here we go. And I'm in the playoffs. And that is. What about me? Weezy. Thank you for it was been a great season, great bro. Great season for you. You put the value and effort. You had a lot of injuries. I'm mathematically uh, eliminated. I mathematically yeah. eliminated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's three, it's three people. I mean, of course. Shout out to shout out to M Extra. Shout out to Shane. Shout out to D Harris. Um, shout out to uh, uh, Reagan. Yeah, those guys are already there. That last spot though, mm -hmm. that's where it gets tricky. Yeah, for sure. That's where it gets tricky. Shout out to the guys yeah. for sure. <laughs> One more week. Let's kick off some things with some NCAA football. Just two decades ago, the University of Miami didn't have. Just the best football program in the country. They had one of the best of all time. After that, Miami has just one 10 win season and zero AP top 10 finishes since 2003. Jeez. It's been through five coaches during that stretch as well. As such, in a typical clumsy Miami way, the school fired Manny Diaz after going seven and five this season and hired Mario Cristobal from Oregon to be the newest head coach at the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. Weezy, great this hire. This this hire for the University of Miami is probably a A. But the way they did, the way they the, the way they hired this guy, yeah, is a is a D. Yeah, no, sure. F. <laughs> you told you told the former coach, we'll just just keep recruiting. We'll see what knowing you was gonna find the whole time, mm -hmm. waiting on this guy to answer you. Mm -hmm. after, after this guy later, after this guy's team laid an egg yeah. in a championship game, a hundred percent. No pride, you, you no, believe. just just lay the egg there. Yeah. But you know, I guess I mean you know he won the guy's favorites. He got a new job, got he got some new money after he lost the championship game. Money. So you know, yeah, what you got you. I agree, with Weezy. Um, I think you know, Cristobal, former Hurricane, mm -hmm. won a championship as a Hurricane. Mm -hmm. So as a perspective and from a like a how it looked on camera, it had people crying in the press conference allegedly. <laughs> he won the press conference. So oh, yeah. that's an A. The way they went about it, and that was foul. Um if you think about it, Miami hasn't really been relevant since they left the Big East. They only no. had one what winning season since they left the Big East and mm -hmm. came to the ACC. Shout out to the ACC for not being a great conference. Who knows, man? Mm -hmm. But you know, it's the Hurricanes, and I don't want to see them prosper anyway. I mean, yeah. it's the Hurricanes. So <laughs> so if if my my outlook on it is great Press conference, great rally of the troops. They got a long way to go. Yeah. They got a long way to go. I agree, man. Um, I give the hire an A plus because you're gonna get a chance to get some of those guys that was missing. Yeah. You know, the Amari Coopers, the Jerry Judy's, the Patrick Sertains, the Teddy Bridgewaters, the Lamar Jackson. Yeah. You have a chance to get some of those guys. Even and get Nick Bosa and Joey Bosa, dude. Yeah, right they around. could dude, they they're from Florida. Yeah. You know, so Money is pouring into their program. It's probably cocaine related, but <laughs> it's crazy. It's for, they've never paid a coach like this. No, eighty million dollars. Yeah, that's nuts, man. Crazy, crazy prices for his assistants. New yeah, facilities, nice. man. He's left though the stability of Eugene. Like he, he's a he's a made man. Yeah, he will. He could go nine and three, whatever the hell, every year, and he have all of the amenities. At the University of Oregon, they lost Willie Taggart the exact same way. Yeah. Um, Oregon has to find a guy that wants to stay there and build in Eugene. That's the only way they'll win championships there, yeah. like Chip Kelly did. So, it's his dream job, though. So, yeah. if anybody's going to turn it around, it's it's Crystal Ball. Um, but it was just. It was unethical the way they did that, man. Shout out to yeah. Manny Diaz. Hope he, you know, I'm pretty sure he find a gig real soon. And I heard, I heard Chip Kelly's on his way back to Oregon. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, Eugene was never a long term play for Crystal Ball. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. That. I don't. I think he was always looking, you know, at but the it, next stop. Okay. You know, so yeah. in turn, it's gonna work. And if Chip Kelly can find his way back to Eugene, yeah. Hey, dog. That's the. That's why he was most successful in college. Yeah. yeah so it no, makes sense for sure. Most definitely. Speaking of successful, <laughs> Javante Tank Davis. 25 and 0 put his record on the line against Isaac Cruz. 22 and 1. This was expected to be an easy. Three to five round walkthrough for Tank. Tank got took in the deep waters, though. Sure <laughs> Cruz was game. They're ready for it. Um, in the sixth round, Tank suffered an injury to his left hand. You can see it as a, as a fight unfolded. He was not throwing his hands too well. But he he, he won. He could win. 
He got to win. He got a tough win, hard fight win. He needs those. Mm -hmm. So, guys, who do you think Tank fights next? Okay. Um, man, that's gonna be tough. Mm, Cause I think that hand, it's gonna, you know as well as I know, Jeff. If you you break a hand yeah. or injure a hand at a high level like that, yeah. you need to stay out as long as you can. That's true. And they won't take the fight super fast. And I just don't think he definitely ain't trying to fight Lomachenko. He's cash cow though. They want him back. So here's 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 what Weezy, what you about to say, I'm sorry. No, you gotta go okay. ahead. So my how I see this unfolding. Mm -hmm. So 2020, it was a super fight set up between, it was supposed to be set up between Tank and Ryan Garcia. Ryan mm -hmm. Garcia is an Instagram guy, same division, uh, great following, also an undefeated lightweight uh, lightweight fighter. Supposed to set it up. Apparently, Garcia backed down, thought he had a bigger fight, bigger money fight, mm -hmm. set up for Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, of course, did not take that fight, was going to fight Earl Spence. Da -da -da, we tried to unfold, Manny Pacquiao's now retired. Ryan Garcia, you know, I'm not going to joke on mental health. Went into his mental health bag, said he wasn't ready to fight. Mm -hmm. But has now resurfaced. The undefeated fighter. That ain't it. That's the, that's the fight that will shut everybody up because that's the biggest name in the division because of his social media following. And, you know, he's you know he's a handsome fella. You know, the, the, the yeah. people like him. They like to see what Ryan about Ken Bosos, though? Yeah, so that'd be a tough fight. I don't, yeah. know if that, I don't know if that fight gets made because of the fighting. Like, it's a uh, top rank and mm -hmm. uh, 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 PBS. Yeah. So that'll be a tough fight to make. That is a great fight too, but I do believe the fight that the world wants is mm -hmm. Tank and Garcia. Yeah. If Garcia will take the fight, that's the problem. Tank only got a million for this fight. Only, I'm saying, which is nuts, mean. you know, yeah. but in in total probably end you know, up right around 2.5, 2.3. Yeah. I don't know about that Garcia fight, man. I don't think that's a good fight for, I don't think it's the, you're, I know what you're saying. This that's the money fight. Mm -hmm. And he don't want to he don't want to fight anybody. Can Bosa, he don't want to fight him. Uh, okay. So in turn, yeah. I think Garcia probably would be the best fight for Tank cuz he can actually win that one. <coughs> absolutely, absolutely. He wins mm -hmm. that one. Um Garcia hasn't taken a punch like that. Yeah. He he's very fast. He's a quick fighter. He, he has a l power himself, mm -hmm. but he don't have a chin though. Yeah. He's been down before. He's been knocked down before and and he's been out. Of, he's been out of the ring for now. At least I think I want to say a year now. So, yeah. but he's a he's a big talker on social media. Has a big following on social media. Kind of like the Paul brothers. Okay, it's more skilled than them, by yeah, the way. For but sure. That has a following like them. So that's what we. Th that's why I think this fight is going to go. Are you worried about Tank though after this fight? If he would have, if he, he didn't look prepared for this fight. Here's I, well, here's the thing. That's not who he was supposed to fight. Yeah, exactly. Forget that. Too. Yeah, it was he late, fight, late he, scratch. He late scratch and he mm -hmm. took that fight. He, he didn't back off the fight because the pay per view date was set. They fall on a Sunday, which was weird as weird as he, hell. Yeah, that's boxing on Sundays is weird. That's stupid. Um, so that's the first thing. I think that's gonna be a Mayweather thing because mm -hmm. his last fight, his exhibition fight against the Paul Brothers on a Sunday as well. I think he's gonna move his promoted fights to Sunday. Gotcha. So to kind of be unique. He's gonna tanks tanks purse is gonna go up now because his pay per view numbers are gonna do well. So he, he's gonna have to keep that up, and the fight will be with Garcia. And to answer your original question, am I worried about it? If it was, if the hand injury didn't happen, yeah. I would have been worried about it. Yeah. But the fact that he he stopped throwing his left hand after round seven and eight, I wasn't worried because that you knew he was hurt and dude couldn't finish him. He you couldn't, couldn't get him. He still couldn't hit him. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Before we get started with halftime, let's talk some NBA. The Trey rumor mill is creaking back to life. Teams are fighting to figure out their bad signings in the offseason and potential suitors for contenders for the NBA championship. Apparently, the Pacers are ready to press the reset button and blow the whole damn team up. <laughs> They're expected to open up trade conversations around some of their veterans, including Miles Turner, Demonis Sabonis, and Karis LeVert. The Pacers are 10-16, and 16, six games below 500, have never been good enough to actually contend in the Eastern Conference and need retooling. Yeah. Is it too early, just right, or too late, Weezy, for the Pacers to press the reset button. I don't think it's too late at all. I think it's uh I think it's just right. Okay. If the upper management don't think it's don't think it's a good idea, I mean don't think it's gonna work, go ahead and blow it up. Now I know the Sabonis and them, now them they're they're in their prime and they don't wanna start all over, but it could be a it could be a, a blessing to making for them. Yeah. They could go somewhere else and you know, anything can happen. Like NBA is a big league. Sure. Yeah. Now I agree hundred percent. Um it's not too late. It's right on time for me. Mm. You blow the cause they've reached that ceiling. They're not. They're not going to get any better than a fifth or sixth seed as to how they're constructed. The, the East is too strong. You're not beating Brooklyn. You're not beating the Bucks. You're not going to beat Philly if Ben Simmons decides he wants to play basketball. You're not going to beat the, the Hawks. 
You're not going to be. Why didn't you say Chicago yet, man? I'm getting there. You're not going. You're definitely not going to be Miami in your. Why fight. you didn't say Chicago I'm yet? Getting there, and surprisingly, because Chicago wasn't there <laughs> last year, now you're not going to be Chicago. Yeah. So now you're in the seventh spot, and you got to fight with the Knicks, and. The res- in the upstart calves, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah. and and don't forget about and I know you're gonna laugh and don't forget about the Hornets who are in the Hornets. fourth seed right yeah, now. Yeah, sure, Hornets. That team good. needs to get blown up. Yeah, because no, you're not gonna win like that. I think it's a little too late though. I mean, every one of their stars had higher value right around this time last year. So I think you pulled a trigger on Miles Turner two years ago. Sabonis last year when he was an actually an All Star. Sabonis accounts for nineteen and a half million. Turner counts for eighteen. Karis LeVert, right at 17 and a half. They're all in the contract until 2024. Mm. You get rid of them a year early, not right on time. You trade people a year early. You know that. You can, but yeah. I think you got to give them, you may have to give them a mulligan only because of COVID, the pandemic, the bubble. And Karis had a bad, I Karis mean, had the injury he, he, coming he, in, off yeah, the injury. So yeah, it's, yeah. You, you factor those things in. Yeah. Victor Vic Oladipo thing that kind of went left when you yeah. traded him. That was a long time ago. But that started, they started it. No, no, That's no. what started it. No. Paul George started it. Well, if you're going to go back that far, yeah, but I'm saying- It was v- the year after that. But they got VO and Sabonis the same year. Yeah, no, for sure. You from, know what I'm from the Paul George shirt. That's, that's what yeah. I mean. So that team was solid. Then you, the VO injury happens, mm-hmm. the pandemic hits, the bubble happens, you have just your man TJ Warren. Yeah, TJ Warren, had who break. ain't played in two years. He ain't played since the bubble. See what I'm saying? He ain't played since the bubble, <laughs> so, talking about he want to stay there. Who are you? <laughs> I got a trade. You hear me? Let's, let's hear Philadelphia receives De'Aaron Fox. 2020, first round pick. Sacramento receives Sabonis and Karis LeVert. Indiana receives Ben Simmons. Sixers get a young guy, starting point guard. Ooh. Kings rebuild with some young pieces. With Sabonis yeah. and, and yeah, Karis LeVert. And Karis. But what does that do for the Pacers? Pacers, they're getting all the draft picks. They get that's the draft picks of Ben Simmons? They get the ben draft picks of Ben Simmons. That? Yeah, that's not enough of Ben Clutch, Simmons. Clutch trying to get him out of there. Clutch is trying to get him out of there, but they're not, they, don't want, they don't want him to go to the Pacers, though. Same. That's a tough sale. I like it for I like it for Philly. I like it for Darren Fox. He gets to play yeah. meaningful basketball and maybe live up to what that crap you said. Twenty seven and a half points. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it's not perfect, but it's yeah. listen. But it's worth Darren it. Fox. Come on now. It's <laughs> not perfect, but it's worth it. Dude, Darren Fox will be traded this he, I would say in December to January, for sure, right by the trade deadline. He's I think, out I think he goes to the Clippers. No way. They don't have enough pieces to trade for him. Who they, they gonna the get? Contracts. Darren Fox goes to the Clippers Luke, this year. Luke Kennard contract Ooh. is horrible. No, 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 man. Only place Darren Fox will go, it, that'll be the trade for Dame Lillard. Yeah, no, that's the per- in perfect word. Yeah, yes, the that's Dame the trade, trade for Dame Lillard. But you get rid of Luke Kennard and and, and, Sabak- and Ibaka's contract for either John Wall or maybe Darren Fox. I'm just saying. I just <laughs> we, we ain't said nothing about Sabonis. So, so yeah. yeah, he goes anyway. He's a game. He's a game. if you're if you're a contender. If Bogdanovich think, ain't playing good for y'all. This if year. you if you if you on the cusp and you can make a move to get him, he he takes you over the top. Y'all don't need him and um, Clint Capella, dog. So why deep. not? They take the two different ball games. Oh, we 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 we'll be over. We 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 go along. Yeah, yeah, but sure. I think that I think it could work. I don't think that can work at all. Sabonis is too slow. You guys ready to get started with halftime? Let's do it. Let's get. It. We're at the midway point. Please enjoy all of the halftime festivities. Halftime, Weezy is back with his Week 14 NFL Power Rankings. You're up, guys. Let's get it. All right, this week, got a little switch up, but bear with me, Jeff. All right, here we go. This week's Weezy's top five. Here we go. Number five, Kansas City Chiefs made it. So they can quit DMing me. Kansas City Chiefs are in at eight and four. Mm. I had to take somebody out, but I, t- I, t- I, took, I took Baltimore out. Baltimore, Baltimore dropped out. But Baltimore lost a game, so. and they're losing their players. It's just they can get back in still a long season. Still Number long four, okay. Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Tom Brady still winning nine and three. Uh, they if they win this week, they clinch the uh, NFC South. Okay, all right. Number three. Number three. I seen him. I seen him run forty six times and ran the ball forty six times the other night. Yeah. <laughs> New England Patriots at nine and four, man. Oh. I you know they playing good ball. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. I Number two. So I couldn't. I couldn't move them. Green Bay Packers. Packers. Green Bay Packers are nine and three. Okay. And the number one team, the quarterback came back and he ran for two touchdowns and threw two touchdowns. Who was that, Jeff? <laughs> at ten, ten and two. It's Kyler Murray. And Arizona, Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals. 
We've been talking about that Kyler Murray jersey. I ain't seen it yet. He wore it. He ain't wore it. He ain't wore that jersey. Kyler Murray stitched black. Yeah. Oh, you know man. that is. He ain't wore that jersey. He you know why? Why? Jefferson Street. Oh, my God. You know what I'm going to I'm going to Jefferson Street. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Jefferson Street, where them Titans at? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, Titans. Yeah. Titans the top Did five. they get any votes to be in the top five power rank? If there was a top seven, Titans would be in it. What about the 49ers? If it was a top Ten of forty nine would be in it. Okay. Really? I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, we're in the top ten. We yeah. number ten, but we top ten. I, I, if y'all would have lost this week, y'all was gonna make the playoffs. Sure would have. You damn right, we. You damn right. But you know, y'all lost. So yeah, no, for sure. It's all good. Yeah. There we go. I ain't mad at this week. This is one of your better weeks, dog. <laughs> it's one yeah. of your better weeks. It's always a good week, man. Nah, the Patriots a little Don't too high. Forty nine to top ten is rough. Don't do that. That's dude. rough. Now, Jeff, you know what it is, though. It's lead dog. It is lead dog. It's, lead dog. it's definitely lead dog. You know why? Till to, to we out here. Till we about this thing. You know what I'm saying? Damn right. <laughs> you guys ready to get started the second half? Let's do it. Let's get it. It's your man, Big Jeff, for the Full Sport Press Podcast. And make sure you check out the Full Sport Press Podcast each and every Monday on iTunes, Facebook, Instagram, Google Play, Stitcher, Beyond Pod, Spotify, YouTube, and of course, the SoundCloud page. Just search Full Sport Press Podcast. And always remember... Camera's always on. The second half is underway. Second half. The top seven documentaries, sports documentaries of 2021. I am Jay Ho. It's your boy, Big Jeff. It's your boy, Weezy. Weezy, the ironic thing about sports documentaries is that actual outcomes of games often take a backseat to stories of the players involved. Any great documentary... Story cannot just be about the one individual or the one moment in time. It has to reflect the history of the story. A good documentary has to make you laugh and make you cry and make you think. And with so many great options to choose from, figuring out the ones from this year's list of documentaries, very difficult to do. In this golden age of sports features, FSP is running out the top seven best sports documentaries of 2021. Yes, sir. Let's start off with the honorable mentions. First one, we have his last chance to you. It's a basketball documentary on Netflix. After five seasons of being in Mississippi, Kansas, California, last chance you switched to basketball, following East Los Angeles College through their 2019-2020 season. Any thoughts about this uh, great franchise that yeah, Netflix has? I think you and I both, when we see the trailer for a last chance, mm-hmm. whether, it's base, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, yeah. get a little excited. Yeah. yeah. We, we locked cool. in on last chance. Oh, man. And this didn't let down. First yeah. year of basketball did not let down. Big Ben. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. The great thing about it, well, I'm not saying great thing about it. We got to experience it in real time of what was happening in the world. Mm-hmm. So we saw COVID approaching. During that season, and you yep. saw how it affected kids that was so much on the line, yep. and with as far as looks and, and being able to, you know, just that like last chance to right. be able to show themselves and get it, you know, and go to college and play yep. the D one school, man, it was great, great, yeah. great, 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 great. Yep. I'm not a big fan of the last chance you basketball. Sheesh. Uh, I wasn't a big fan. No, I. Sheesh. It, it may be because I'm a football fan. I mean, it. Was, no, 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 no. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> The show wasn't. The show is not bad, uh, but I just missed last chance. You football. I got you. Yeah, that's my take on it. Yeah, having Coach Lock, Coach Collins, Penny shot the penny, um, coaching <laughs> JUCO basketball. Yeah, I heard some great stories. Oh yeah, and so I was a fan of JUCO basketball, and seeing this team reminded me of some of the Columbia Columbia State teams that Penny and Coach Lock coached yeah. on. Man, so seeing. Uh, that in real time, like Jeff mentioned, with um, Coach Mosley all the way to um, Deshaun Holler, mm-hmm. Joe Thomas. Joe Thomas. No, not Joe Hampton. Joe Hampton. Joe Hampton. No, you're right. Yeah, you're Joe absolutely. Hampton. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. So seeing Joe Hampton, all of those guys, and following them the next year as they transferred and went to other schools, mm-hmm. uh, Division One programs. It was cool to watch, man. I'm a big fan of Lance Chance You yeah. Big Big book. Listen, we <laughs> listen. Next year they're coming right back with yeah. another year at East Los Angeles, man. The thing is, there's a knock on JUCO basketball on the West Coast. I'll talk to you about that when the camera's off, man. <laughs> Said hoop, ain't, hoop is different. I can see that. Yeah, in I LA, see, I can see that. Yeah, no, most definitely. And the last honorable mention. It's one of my favorites of the year, man. The Inside Story, the story of TNT. Um, this yes, is sir. the Inside Story. It shows how Inside the NBA began uh, one of the greatest sports studio shows of all time. I love 
Yeah. Inside the NBA is the yeah. best TV show ever. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't say ever. Pardon the Interruption is the best ever. To me. To me. Pardon the Interruption. Pardon the Interruption. Is, Dude. Their, their documentary is going to be great. Just oh, like my this. God. It's the best. They change the game. Pardon the, pardon the Interruption changed the game. For sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But Inside the NBA allowed sports figures that we watched as, you know, all players. NBA players. Yeah. Some of the greatest players we've ever seen. Yeah. Um, get a chance to kind of live and be free and kind of be who they are. Yeah. Charles Barkley set the standard of being an ex-NBA player. For sure. yeah, it's, it's a great, it's just, it's just a fun watch. Every night, no yeah. matter who's playing, even if the game's a blowout, you still, if it's a late, late West Coast game, you still try your best mm -hmm. to watch inside the NBA when it goes out. Just, just to see what Chuck going to say. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. And that's on him. And if you guys want to watch that song, HBO Max, Ernie Johnson keeps the ship roll. He does. And uh, he's been through a lot, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, since he's been at Inside the NBA. Yeah. So to see um, how fortunate all of them are for each other. Yes, sir. Um, kind of, especially if you do a podcast every week, you it makes it. yeah you yeah. respect it to see yeah. how they go about doing stuff. So that's dope, man. Inside story, story of TNT's Inside the NBA. Let's move on to the list. Keep Going doing. with number seven, we have Kevin Garnett's Anything Is Possible <laughs> on Showtime. Jeff, let's talk about him. I tell you what, Showtime is cooking when it comes to sports documentaries. It, 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 this, now, this one was postponed a little bit. It was supposed yeah. to come out, I believe, originally saw a promo for this 2020, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe late 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. So they held on to it for a little bit. Kevin Garnett's story, I mean, one of the best basketball players of our of our time. We sure. know this. And just to see how – just to hear – you know, documentaries, you know, you're hearing people's perspective on certain things. So seeing him breaking down different parts of his life, different parts of his career, mm -hmm. I didn't – I didn't think I was going to watch this and really enjoy it as much as I did. This is one. This was a sleeper one to me. I was. I wanted to see it. Yeah. But I didn't think. I thought it was going to be one of those things. Was like, ah, okay, it's cool. I remember this. I remember that. I remember that. But just hearing them talk about it, I was like, man, this was dope. Yeah, was not dope. for sure. Yeah. Please, have you seen that one yet? I have. Yeah. Okay. The, the, this one, Kevin Garnett. I, he's passionate about everything. You everything do. is true. That's he's fair. passionate about everything you do. It's like, I thought you just like that on the court. No. Now he passed about that. What kind of food he eat and everything? Yeah, man. it's just it, it's it's a good one, man. Yeah, I wish he delved into a little bit more of his personal life, kind of trials and tribulations on that side, being a professional athlete and how him being so locked in, like Weezy mentioned, mm -hmm. being the best power forward in the NBA can kind of mess up things in your personal life. And he didn't really talk about that. That's the drawback. From that. I think he didn't. I think he didn't talk about this stuff on purpose. On purpose. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I know I'm not gonna speak on that. But yeah, I think it's some sure. stuff he can't oh, yeah. talk about. Oh yeah, yeah, you know it is. Yeah, no, it has to be. Yeah. But the Ronnie Fields things that he talked about, yeah. I didn't know that the reason that Ronnie Fields didn't make it to the NBA was because of a car wreck. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I thought it was something different. And to see, you know, one of the greater athletes of our coming generation up. coming up yeah. um, to not make it just because of you know something like that, man, it was cool to see. And for him to even make that a major part. Of the documentary, man. Spoiler alert, it's really, it's really crazy, good documentary, documentary. For sure. Yeah. And that's on Showtime as well. Um, let's move right along to number six. It's Russell Westbrook's Passion Play. <laughs> uh, going right back to you, Jeff. So this one was dope to me for a lot of reasons. So I've been a Russ fan since UCLA. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed watching him play because he's just – he reminded me of AI. From okay. Day, from day one. That's how he was. He reminded me of AI. So that's my type of guard. That's what I like to play. That's how I like to see the basketball play. So that's this this spoke to a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And you know, seeing when he when he lost his homeboy that he played high school with, and and he was the one. And yeah. Russ stepped in and when he passed away, Russ stepped in after that and, and kind of walked in his shoes and, mm -hmm. and became who he is today. And you got to see Russ talk about his dealings with the media and how he does take that stuff personal. 100%. He plays like he takes it personal. 100%. And he he reads it, he hears it, and, you know, it, it's so you got to hear his perspective, got to see his point of view. He, he touched on a lot of different subjects, so I, I really appreciate that as a fan. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, the, this, the one by Russell, what Westbrook is, we, all we get to see is the passion of the court, rocking the baby, you know, yeah. you too little and talking crazy on the court. With, he played with a lot of passion. This we got to see, you know, calm down, the fashion, mm -hmm. uh, you know, really like really who he was. That I, I, I mean, we saw a, a different, a whole different personality of him, mm -hmm. and 
it really made me respect him more. Oh, man. Because he can turn he turned it off. You know, that's kinda like, well, kinda like what Kobe and them did. Like, you know, yeah. on the court, they're monsters. But they can turn it off when they get to the house. Mm-hmm. He turned it completely off. Yeah. Kevin Garnett ain't turned it off. <laughs> that's probably why he didn't talk about his wife on there. That's what I was talking about. 100%. Right, I want to speak on yeah, that. no, for sure. <laughs> um if anybody listens to this podcast, we appreciate everybody listening. You guys know that I'm not a Russell Westbrook fan. Never have. I have this weird thing that goes on. It's really weird, and I noticed it. From Carl Malone, I hated Carl Malone. <laughs> I, like the the despise that I had for Carl Malone, mm-hmm. it went away as he became an older man and came back yeah. um, as you know more things were revealed yeah, about this dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and the next person was Reggie Miller. And I hated Reggie Miller. Then I grew in, you know, just appreciate what he does. Okay, John Stockton as well, of course. And then it was Dwayne Wade. <laughs> I hated Dwayne Wade. I hate him. Just it's something serious. Mm. And then LeBron James as well. I began to appreciate him as a basketball player. Yeah. This documentary made me appreciate Russell Westbrook yeah. to a point where I understand why he does what he does yeah. because of the way his father raised him, having a great father in your life will kind of make you yeah. a real man about Absolutely. certain things. Yeah. Um, and also seeing, you know, that we have a lot more in common than I didn't know. And, yeah, man, it was a really, really good sale on that one. Yeah. And Russell Westbrook, I haven't said anything bad about Russell Westbrook since I've watched this documentary. True. Not one thing. That's true. I'm now the beef is over. I'm proud of you. You yeah, know it, what I'm saying? It, this will turn you into a fan. 100%. Yeah. And that's what a good documentary that's what it's supposed to do. For sure. Yeah. 100%. Let's move right on to number five. It's Bad Sport Hoop Schemes on Netflix. This is a series of, sh- of six short documentaries about sports scandals streamed on Netflix. This one was about a guy named Stephen Headache Smith and the Arizona State Basketball Program. Weezy, did you watch this? One? I haven't seen this one. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. See, that's the good thing about a lot of this. I was making sure that a lot of people, yeah, because I've seen all of these yeah. on here. Yeah. But some people that haven't seen this is a really – Really good documentary. Yes, you have uh, a chance to kind of see, especially being a gambler in yeah. your former life, yeah. dude, <laughs> watching this game, you really got to watch this. Like yeah. deadass, you got to watch this. you appreciate, and you it'll really make you mad about gambling too, though. But I'm telling you, please watch this. It make you look at how, especially it, we live in a time now where gambling almost is like accepted mm-hmm. and it makes you fearful this documentary will make you fearful of 100%. where this could go with the allowing so man, it was it was it was a great watch that's a great, great watch, watch great man. watch great yeah. watch yeah just the unpredictability of sports gambling you know people throwing games yeah it's very illegal especially when you're actually playing in said game yeah. i had no clue what was going on in arizona state in that 94-95 season, this guy was headed to the NBA. Yeah. And threw it all um, away. he threw it all away for some quick money. And at the end of the day, man, you know, it's not necessarily quick money. It's money that you couldn't touch. Yeah. And, and some lies in between that. And Weezy, please watch man, this, it's a good, it, Yeah, you would nah. think you're watching a movie. I'm telling you, bro. It's really <laughs> good. I'll check it out. It's put together really well, for sure. Number four on the list is Untold, Malice in the Palace. It's on Netflix as well. Weezy, did you watch this one? i seen this one. Okay. And... To see this one and to actually lived it, mm-hmm. like we saw it live. Mm-hmm. We did. We saw it live. But what I like about this one is people are going to be remembered for Malice in the Palace than their whole NBA careers. That's facts. Yeah. Um, ah, Jermaine O'Neal. Jermaine O'Neal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jermaine O'Neal was, could play. I mean, he was awesome. But nobody, all, yeah. all you, I mean, if you make up Jermaine O'Neal now, you Google him, you're going to see Malice in the Palace. No question. Yeah. He and that's all you're going to be remembered for. It's messed up, not to cut you off, but the messed up part about it is that was his best chance of getting a chip. Yeah, that team and threw it all away one night. I really think they were going to win a championship. That I year, think they man. were. I really do. I really do, man. The, the, it was set up between them and Detroit, mm-hmm. and they had a chance. It, them, Detroit, and San Antonio were the three best teams. Mm-hmm. They did that, and they were done. They were mm-hmm. done after that. Yeah, yeah. And I think the way that they portrayed it, it's coming from the players' perspective yeah, for the first time. For the first time. Maybe. Having people that were actually at the arena at that time, it just grabs your attention, man. It's the idea of fans and players getting into a scuffle like that. And it, what sets it apart is that it simply doesn't retell that story. It explains how the perspective of America mm-hmm. looks at African Americans and fans and, you know, the the way that they portrayed these guys. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. man. Just it came together really well. One of the better documentaries. 
I think of all time, man, uh, this untold story, Malice in the Past. Really, really good documentary. You know, and you know what's the sad thing about it? Like you see Reggie's career is mm-hmm. done. Done. It's done. Jermaine O'Neal never got a chance to redeem himself. I mean, he played he played a longer career. For sure. But I mean, the, the Pacers were finished after that. Done. Steven Jackson got to get got to get his chip. Yeah. Ronald Tess, he got with Kobe. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it, it worked out for them. But man, it's just it's just. Man, that was a tough man. It's gotta suck with Jermaine O'Neal to see them boys get chips and then your yeah. best chance of getting a chip and they ruined it for you. Yeah. Reggie Miller's what? Reggie Miller too. Yeah. yeah it was those he, two. he was done and he was the he was passing the well, the torch was passed already. Yeah. But he was holding on just to for he was trying life. to send him out the right way. Yeah. yeah for that their was life. It. Yeah. <laughs> right. For their life is yeah, funny. <laughs> Number three on the list is the Kings, Hagler, Leonard, and Duran on Showtime. Jeff is our boxing aficionado. He's kicking it to you. This was dope for me, like because I would, I, my grandfather made me watch these fights mm. on VHS tapes when I was a kid growing up. So seeing how they captivated the entire world in the '80s with just three boxes, the biggest, you know, some of the biggest names in the sport, well, the biggest names mm-hmm. in the sports before Tyson, post Ali, as Ali was in his decline, and mm-hmm. you know he had Foreman and things like that. But mm-hmm. they're they're fighting between each other and just watching how they broke down, how how America was tuned in, no matter what they were doing. Their four part series, I man, I watched it twice. Really, I watched it twice. Okay. It was dope. It was yeah, dope. those three guys picked up where Muhammad Ali was leaving the game yeah. and carried it to where Tyson took it yes, and beyond. Man, I just like the way they mixed the old footage. With new talk, just to see Roberto Duran talking, to see man Hagler yep. going through what he went through, and even Hearns, Tommy Hearns being staying a little too long. Yeah, stayed a little too yeah. long. Yeah, yeah. yeah not nah, for sure. But it was cool to see that man. I was watching boxing then, but I wasn't. I really became a boxing fan and watching boxing at a high level when Tyson came. So yeah. I missed out on a lot of this stuff and I saw a lot of these guys fighting very old. Yeah. And it was yeah. it wasn't the same. But yeah. now I see how great these Absolutely. guys were. So I like I said, watching the VHS of course I didn't watch them live, yeah. but to see the VHS tapes as I was growing up it was like, you gotta know this fight. You gotta know yeah. what happened with the first round between Hagler and Hearns. You gotta know what that means. Sure. You gotta know what no moss means right. when Durant quit on this thing. Well he says he didn't say yeah, it. But, but yeah. that's the story. There's yeah. our that's the mythical story that he said that no moss on the on his stool and whatever. So yeah. to see that stuff play out man was great. Yeah, no, nah, for yeah. sure. We, I know you ain't watched that. You got to watch that one. <laughs> I'm going to check that one out. That's a good one, too. Yes. For sure. For sure. <laughs> um, number two on the list, The Day Sports Stood Still, HBO Max. Definitely one of the heavier films that we talking about, about this. Kind of how Rudy Gobert saved the Rudy world. Rudy Gobert saved the world, man. For sure. <laughs> yeah. nah. We love this one, too. We, yeah, hey, we, we For real. To see that, like... They're going minute by minute, day by day, yeah. how the NBA found out about things, man. It's really, really, really cool. And uh, an African-American guy, Antoine Fuquay, uh, yeah, did that. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Watching that play out, I remember because that was the jazz, the jazz and the Pelicans. Thunder. Thunder were playing. Mm-hmm. They stopped that game. Stopped that game. And then the next game was the Pelicans and uh, someone else. But the Pelicans mm-hmm. were playing, and there's a doubleheader, and they just sent everybody home. Like, yeah. it was – and that's just – you know, I mean, if you're being honest, we're still in that. No, I'm telling you. If we're, we're still there. But what's crazy is Rudy Gobert had no idea what he was doing. He had no clue. He had no. He was joking. He had yeah. no idea that he changed. He stopped the world. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the thing. If Rudy Gobert does not have COVID, yeah. I think it's a totally different situation. Like, I think people don't really take it serious until it gets to a point where they shut down. And in major events, because because yeah. if we do the timeline, the SEC tournament was in Nashville mm-hmm. that year, and teams were already here, mm-hmm. I think, and that happened because no, that's true. It's probably that weekend. Yeah, so teams were already in Nashville uh, uh, approaching, and that happens on ESPN. And I just remember watching it like, wait, what? Right? Yeah, UT and, was warming up. They from back Kentucky. They yeah. they were warming yeah. up, and you and they hear caught, about they caught them back in the locker room. Yeah, because the Ivy, the Ivy League tournament had already canceled, but. You know, they're usually the first ones to cancel anyway. So they'd already canceled, but then we're yeah. just pushing on with everything else. It's like, nah, man, we can't do this. Yeah. Now I'm telling you, Rudy Gobert definitely saved the world, yeah. but we're almost, you know, you're looking at the ticker of like how many people had COVID. And to see that we're almost up to a million people that have died from COVID. It's crazy. Um, and, and, still just, going. Yeah, and still going. And still going. And that Omarion, and I know it's not the Omarion, but, but we know. Shout yeah, out to Fat Joe. Yeah, for sure. But that Omarion. He's out there. Yeah. It, it, God bless. God bless. Shout, we'll, out to, shout out to watch. Yeah, for sure. Um, last but not least, Tiger. It's great. Hey, it's Tiger. It's me. Hey, it's Tiger. It's me, Tiger. 
HBO Max. Weezy, you watch this one? Sort of. Oh God, God. Dog, <laughs> I sort of. Okay. How did? How, I how didn't do you finish you, it. You didn't finish. I it. didn't finish this one. See, because I knew what Tiger was doing. We did too, but it's <laughs> bro. You have to see why Tiger did what he did, and I'm telling you, Tiger, the the saying, the saying. Hmm. A chip off the old block. Hey, come on now. You are your father's you child. Your father. You're your father's All of son. That. I'm telling son. you, man, that stuff. And I was talking to um, people at work about this. It's kind of weird. It didn't have anything to do with Tiger, but it was more about like genes and. What you inherit. And, and, yeah, yeah, for sure. You like, even get here. Yeah, some of that stuff, like whether it's, you know, you have a family history, you can't not family history. Yeah. Like if you have a family history of diabetes, your chances of getting diabetes is a lot yes, more yes, higher compared to somebody that doesn't. I don't give a damn if you're. Uh, fucking um, what are those called like uh, um, yeah like you're a world class athlete yeah. if you have family history of diabetes you can still get diabetes at a high level 100% if you are a you know, 100% with you, most definitely I try to tell you that all the time <laughs> um, but if you are a person that is addicted to drugs guess what that is in your blood if your daddy shakes it shakes it shakes it yeah Shakes Legendary in. shakes him. Yeah. Guess what? It's going to be in you. It yeah. might not happen when you want it to. Ah, yeah, man. But it's going to happen. Ah, man. If you allow it to. Yeah. For sure, man. And that's what I took from that entire documentary, man. That um, as much as he didn't want to be like his father, he was just like his just dad. Just like his father. Yeah, man. Really great documentary. I think the best documentary of 2021. Absolutely. Sure. Absolutely. It's my favorite. Yeah. Um, I didn't watch it twice, but it was good. Nah, okay. that's one of the ones you yeah. got one. Yeah. One and done. Yeah, because it was heavy. It was heavy. So, it was heavy. heavy but yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. And shout out to Tiger for allowing us footage, that footage to come out yeah. with him and his dad. Yeah. And shout out to him for you know, being open. He was very open about mm. what was going on. And More open than I thought he was. That's what I'm be. saying. So he could have easily sugarcoated a lot. Yeah. Skipped over a couple oh, yeah. things. Leave some stuff out. Yeah, I on purpose. Who, who was going to say something? Nobody. Like, I mean, you know. George, George still played crazy with the flu game in, in, uh, in the last days. Here's the thing. Tiger Woods, Earl Woods, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Was the first LeVar Ball. Joe Jackson. I'm Joe saying Jackson. I'm talking about sports. Sports wise. Or, or no, him was a, a Serena Williams dad. The timeline. It's close. It's close timeline. I think it's close. I think Venus is now nah, Tiger older than both of them. True. Way older than both of them. I think I Venus, started younger than him though. No, 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 Tiger. Remember, Tiger was on TV at seven, eight. That's true. Yeah, yeah. but shot. Venus got her first movie at fifteen. No, she, that's Tiger, a, that's Tiger a movie too. Yeah, that's a hell of a movie. King Rich is good. It's a good movie. That's a hell of a movie. That's a movie though. It ain't a doc, but, but it's a good movie. But are you saying that because you're a girl, Dad? Nah, it's a hell of a movie. It's a good movie. Yeah, yeah, nah, he, hell of a movie. He 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 called a shot. 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 Moved into the big city and still called a shot. Called a shot. Yeah, but I'm saying Earl Woods now. <laughs> Listen, no, 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 no. Before LeVar Ball, before Todd Maranovich, his dad was a master, like, insane person, a helicopter dad. Shout out to the helicopter dads. They out here. Yeah. Ooh, they out here. Yeah, they hmm. out here. Earl Woods, though. Earl Woods. Shout out to him. But he caught his shot, too. He did. Earl Woods caught his shot, Weezy. Yeah, caught his shot. Oh, he caught his shot, for sure, man. Really good list. Um, really good documentaries. If you haven't seen one of these, watch all nine of these. Really good documentaries. Really? Yeah. All of them are good. It's not like you sometimes you watch some documentaries and you're like, man, I ain't gonna lie. That was a waste of about 45 minutes <laughs> or an hour yeah. or two hours. Yeah. And you know what? what's crazy about this? None of these now, which and I have to give ESPN 30 for 30 credit for bringing the sports documentaries to the front. Yeah. yeah. No ESPN documentaries were in our top nine. Nah, not one. No, nah, it was a, it was yeah. a slow year for them. Yeah, well, they had man in the arena, Tom yeah. Brady, but, but that's not even it's still going on. Yeah. 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 Now, let me ask y'all a question. Talk to me. Which sports story have y'all lived? Do y'all want to see documentary? Ooh. Real quick, Johnny Manziel. I'm with you on that one. Real? Why? Why Johnny Manziel? Because that, that run, that from, Johnny that Manziel, Manziel run okay. from his freshman year uh -huh. at Texas A&M until probably two weeks ago in Nashville, Tennessee. Is the greatest story <laughs> not told. I take that back. You know which one I wanted to do a documentary on? No. The honey badger. I don't know. That that that's ain't a good that's a that's a that's a that's a thirty for thirty short though. 
N- I don't know. That's a 30 no, for 30 that, short. No, that one year, he was had a great year. Mm-hmm. Then he got kicked off the team that summer. Yeah. yeah. And he didn't, he didn't play it all. Then he yeah. got drafted. Yeah. Yeah. And That's a, a great story. Yeah. I'm not knocking the story. What I'm saying is that Johnny Manziel, bro, oh, Johnny, Johnny Manziel, Manziel bro. was with Drake, with LeBron. Yeah. He was with, had access to stone. any and everything. Yeah. Man, yeah. dude, like Johnny Manziel, it's two that I want. He still got drafted too. It's two that I want. First round, yeah. yeah. I no disrespect, Florida. Ain't no question. Yeah, that's one. I oh, mean that 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 run that that run the Tebow Florida teams. I want I want I want those tapes. The world gotta know yeah. about that. Man. Some, we we missing some stuff on that, that those teams. That that one and Cam was a good one. Cam was Cam. Yeah, Cam we kind of seen that one. Cam was there. Cam. Kim was in Florida. Yeah, yeah he, he's part of that one too. He's on that. He's on that squad. Josh Gordon. Josh Gordon still be written. It's still written. He's soon to get a championship this year. He's, he's, he's close. He's close. He's close. He's close. And unfortunately, post NBA, how it didn't pan out, tell mm. I don't want to see that one. Mm. I ain't going to lie. That's a cautionary tale, dog. I'm going to tell you what. That's I'm a cautionary tell you what. tale, dog. And then we out of here. I'm That's watching a- Duke University. No, not Duke University. I'm tripping. Clutch University on oh. BET. Man, listen, man. I mean, I'm watching that first episode, man. And listen, dog. Now, I watched Terrence Clark play yeah. from – he was in the 10th grade all the way through Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And, dog, to see this man pass away, the way that he passed away, yeah. and to see – you saw the hurt in Brandon Boston's yeah. – Eyes, dog. Like, that kid will never be the same. But to see him play in his first NBA game, had 27 points last night. Yeah. I'm forever rooting for that kid. Yes, sir. Man, because he, at the, uh, the age of 19, 20 years old, yeah. he, but that was traumatic. Yes, sir. Traumatic. Yeah. Man, that was rough to watch, man. It's on BET. It's called Clutch Academy. Yeah, yeah it's Clutch Academy. Man, it's really good. It's the saddest shit you'll ever see that first the episode. First episode. Dead ass. They did it right. They did it well. They did though. it right they, though. Yeah, they did it right. Hey, BET did it they right. Did it right. They did it right. Man, that was Cause that could have been. It could have been bad. It that could have been, been bad. And they did it right. But they did it I'm right. Yeah, that. they ain't messed but, that one up. But they ain't messed that one up. Yeah. Real. Listen. Let's let's go on. Come on, come no, on no, 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 real quick. Real quick. <laughs> yeah. Have y'all ever cried in any of these documentaries? Yeah. <laughs> he said yeah. Not any of these. No, and I'm I'm a documentary period. Did anyone, I'm going to tell you one. My first one, the documentary made me cry. Okay. Telfair. Telfair, you- when he gets drafted, dead ass, I can watch that shit 20 times. Okay. The 20, I've seen it 20 times. Okay. I'm watching it for the 21st time. Okay. When he gets drafted, I, I'm going to cry, dude. I'm going to cry because you know how hard he worked to get there. His whole family was working for him. To get to the point, he gets drafted yeah. in the lottery, and to see where he's at now, it's even more yeah. sad. Yeah. Oh man, what about you? Is you had one that you cry about? I when last time you cry, man? It's been a rough. I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't think. You can't think of one that made you cry. Uh-uh. Okay. I know one more. When we, we gone, I T. I said Thomas. Is that Thomas? Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. Yeah, you took it. That's that's rough right there. Yeah. Oh, I can't do that. I yeah. said Thomas because. That's, IT. that's a dream deferred. Yeah. That's a dream deferred. Just he missed the bag. It was right there. That yeah, was right there. IT. Oh, the bag was right there. He played his heart out. He gave, I mean, he gave Boston everything he had. Everything he had. Yeah. I oh, mean, you ain't going to talk about the time you cried in the documentary. I'm though. trying to, I'm really trying you to. Know, everybody, they left me in the. No, 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 no. You no, got no. one. What was one? You, you just said, hell yeah. He cried on all of them. Which one? Andre Giants. Andre Giants is a good one. It was good. It was exciting. Should have made the list. On hard. On hard. On hard. That was tough. Blue Blazer. Hey, man. That was tough. Telfair? Telfair, yeah. bro. Terrence Clark, though? Yes. Terrence Clark? Come I'm on. for real, like. Come on, man. You, you like to pass that church now. I'm going to end it, but y'all be aware of it. You can't. Nah, I'm just <laughs> saying. Like church, I'm though. just Come saying, on. dog. I mean, man, that's what people want to hear. Some yeah. real yeah. conversation. Yeah. yeah, man. So, yeah, all nine of those really good documents. Check them out. Um, Jeff is holding on to his one he cried about. I'm so we'll just move on. It's cap. It's all good. It's all good. I, yeah, I cried. Come on, you, come on, you, come on, you better pass that shirt. <laughs> hey, you cried. I didn't cry. I could we but cry. I didn't say it ain't gathered. Together. together. When I cry, I cry. You cry. You cry. <laughs> <laughs>
together. <laughs> Tweet us with questions throughout the week at Full Sport Press. Don't forget to comment, give us a thumbs up on the YouTube page, on the iTunes page. Please rate and subscribe. But more importantly, don't forget to tell a friend. To tell a friend. Tell a friend. Weezy. Everything paid for. Jeff. Camera's always on, buddy. Cameraman, the revolution will be podcasted. We are out. Thank you for listening to the Full Sport Press podcast. To catch up on previous episodes, please check out the YouTube page and wherever you find your favorite podcast. Don't forget, tell a friend to tell a friend. The revolution will be podcasted.